Hi everyone, this is William from the Headphone Experience. I'm here tonight with a comparison of two pretty high-end headphones and I have to say these are two of my favorites of any of the headphones I've reviewed up to this point and I thought I'd throw together a little comparison while I had both of these. So anyway, the first one is the Hi-Fi Man HE1000 SE version and uh, I did a comparison of this to the HE1000 Stealth was my last video and I still uh, plan to do a full review of this but just kind of th throwing these comparison videos in uh, you know kind of fill-ins between uh, working on my full review of this this is an exceptional headphone and I want to really put some time and effort into my full review and the headphone that I'm comparing this to tonight is the ZMF Atrium Openback. And um, this is also one of my favorite headphones. I just love this headphone. And these two are both great headphones, but they do sound quite a bit different. And um, with me, it kind of depends on my mood or what type of music I'm going to listen to or what I'm looking for in a particular listening session uh, but you know I, I can't really say that one is better than the other I you know really like both of these but in different ways so that's kind of the point of this video tonight is to tell you how these are different and how they're similar and they're pretty close to the same price range uh, the hi-fi man HE1000 SE up until just recently is sold for $3,500 and that's in US dollars. Well, it happens to be on sale right now for $1,999. The ZMF Atrium is a little more expensive. This starts at $2,499 and there's a lot of different options with the ZMF. You can choose different types of wood, different grill materials. Uh, different ear pads, even different um, the pins on the yokes, different things. And uh, so the price starts at $24.99. This one here would go for $26.99 because it's made of aged cherry wood and has copper grills instead of the aluminum grills that would be on the base model. So, um, Anyway, getting started with my comparison, I want to uh, give you some specs on both of these first. And um, starting with where they're made, uh, the Hi-Fi Man is made in China, and the ZMF is made in the USA. And I did want to mention that the that ZMF does offer a lifetime warranty on the drivers, and that's uh, pretty unusual. I haven't heard of that from anyone else, so. Uh, something you might want to take into consideration but getting into the headphones the hi-fi man is a planar magnetic design uh, this does use stealth magnets and well I'll leave that leave it at that for right now um, the ZMF is a dynamic type driver so these uh, they're both open backs but uh, one's dynamic, the other's planar magnetic, which is going to give you a difference in sound characteristics. Uh, the Hi-Fi Man has an impedance of only 35 ohms. The ZMF has an impedance of 300 ohms, so that's going to make a lot of difference on how they react to different headphone amps. Um, they both have a sensitivity of 96 decibels at 1 milliwatt. So, um, but because of the ZMF being 300 ohms, it's going to take a little bit more power to drive it. But neither one is really that hard to drive. The, the Hi-Fi Man is actually pretty easy. doesn't take a lot of power. The ZMF a little bit more. But, like I said, this is a 300 ohm headphone, which would be considered high impedance. And... Uh, the synergy between the amp and headphone can really be affected by that higher impedance and in my opinion the ZMF works really well with OTL type 2 amps and I'll get into that a little bit more when I describe the equipment I used on these. Uh, the weight of these, the Hi-Fi Man claims a weight of 440 grams. It came in a slightly heavier at 457 grams. 
on my kitchen scale, which is uh, pretty much normal for a full size um, open back headphone. The ZMF is a little heavier. They claim 490, but I believe that claim is for the standard edition with the aluminum grills. <clears throat> this one does have copper grills, so I think it adds a little more weight. The H Cherry might also. So anyway, this one did weigh in at 524 grams, which is getting up there pretty heavy, but I've said this many times before in my videos that heavy headphones really don't bother me. Uh, weight is not an issue with me. Clamping force is a lot more of an issue. Uh, the Hi-Fi Man uses synthetic leather ear pads. The ZMF uses real leather, she real sheepskin leather uh, ear pads. The Hi-Fi Man, uh, the cheaper, the lower price models use plastic grills on the egg-shaped headphones, but the SE, um, I believe all the 1000 uh, models use aluminum grills, including I think the Aria's use aluminum grills also. And then uh, the ZMF has a uh, copper grill on this model. Like I said, that is an upgrade though. Um, the Hi Fi Man uses 3.5 millimeter connections at the headphone end. The, uh, ZMF uses, you can see here, um, four pin mini XLRs. And then um, the material the headphones made of, the Hi Fi Man, I'll show this a little bit closer here. The ear cups themselves are basically plastic, but they do have a real wood veneer around them. And then you've got aluminum around the grills, aluminum grills, aluminum yokes, stainless steel headband. Like I said, I believe the ear pads are a synthetic leather with a felt on the inside. And then I think the head strap, it feels like suede. I'm not sure if it's a real suede or if it's a synthetic suede, but it is nice. Uh, the ZMF, the difference is, is the, the ear cups are uh, machined out of a solid chunk of wood. It's not a veneer. There's no plastic in there. And then uh, they have the copper grills and the copper post. Um, I'm not sure. I think this is aluminum here on the yokes. And then uh, the ear pads are real sheepskin leather. And the head pad, uh, the headband pad is real sheepskin leather also. And then um, as far as what they come in, the 1000 SE came in a pretty nice wooden box. The ZMF came in a very nice plastic case. I mean, you know, like really durable, dust proof, waterproof. A crush proof, um, you know, a case that probably cost $100, similar to like a Pelican type pay case. Um, as far as the equipment I used reviewing these, usually when I compare two headphones, I try to use the same DAC and amp on both to make it a fair comparison. But because um, the ZMF is really sensitive to what amp I use. It can make a lot of difference in the sound. I chose to go with different amps on the two of these. In fact, different decks because I wanted to go with the what sounded best with each of these headphones and then uh, do my comparison from there. You know, so both of these are performing at their best. So what I ended up doing with the uh, Hi-Fi Man is I'm reviewing the iFi Audio uh, Pro IDSD Signature, which is a combination amp DAC right now. And I really like the way that the Hi-Fi Man sounds with that combination. It just brings, uh, this headphone is all about detail and that DAC just puts out an incredible amount of detail and separation between instruments and it really brings out the best of this headphone. So that's what I'm using to uh, do my comparison here. Now the ZMF can sound really good with solid state amps, but what I found is that this headphone just goes up to another level with a good OTL amp. So what I'm using with this is I'm using the Felix Audio uh, Felix which is an OTL amp, OTL Type 2 amp, and I just love the way this headphone sounds with that amp. It just, um, this sounds great with any of the solid state amps I've tried, uh, especially the Audio GD Stack, which is the 
R8 DAC and uh, Master 9 amp, but this just rises up to a whole nother level when hooked up to a good OTL tube amp, and so far, uh, the Felix Audio Echo has been the best of what I've tried as far as matching up with this headphone. And then I use the uh, Audio GD R8 MK2, which is an R2 RDAC, at, to feed the Felix Audio Echo. Okay, um, and then reviewing these, uh, the Hi-Fi Man comes with one set of ear pads and I'm sure there's other ear pads that are available for it, but I don't think Hi-Fi Man sells different ear pads for that headphone. I'm not sure, but ZMF definitely sells a, a, a large variety of different ear pads that can significantly change the sound. Um, for this review, I'm using the uh, Universe pads, which are kind of a down-the-middle pad uh, as far as sound. Um, I forgot the names of the other pads, but you can put a pad, ear pad on it that will give it a more neutral, a little more analytical sound, or you can go the other direction and give it a warmer, more bassy sound. I chose to go with the Universe pad, which takes it kind of down the middle. Uh, the one thing I did want to point out about both of these headphones that they do have in common is both of these headphones provide an extremely realistic sound. They both just make, especially acoustic instruments, uh, string instruments, just sound so real. And uh, the ZMF especially with the OTL tube amp. But both of these just make, um, they just sound really organic and have a really natural, real sound to, to them. Okay, getting into the sound comparison, um, I would say the Hi-Fi Man is almost what I would describe as neutral with just a slight V-shape, just a slight emphasis to the mid-bass and a slight emphasis to the treble, but um, almost dead neutral. The ZMF, um, I would say, is basically neutral except for a small bump in the mid-bass. This just does have a little bit of boost, a little bit heavier mid-bass than what I would consider neutral. Uh, both of these headphones extend very well into the sub-bass, but neither one is what I would describe as emphasizing the sub-bass. They both reach very low and have very solid, tight, well-controlled sub-bass, but not emphasized above what I would consider neutral. Uh, getting into the mid bass, once again, both of these have very tight, well controlled bass. I would say the Hi Fi Man is even tighter. Um, maybe the best, um, most well controlled bass I've heard, but the uh, ZMF does have a little bit more weight to the mid bass and a little bit more punch to the mid bass. Um, just a little, probably about three or four decibels more emphasis in the mid bass than the Hi-Fi Man does. Um, getting into the mids, both of these headphones have a nice rich warm mid range, especially female vocals. They both have beautiful female vocals. Neither one sounds dry, neither one um, sounds sterile. They both have nice warm rich Vocals, uh, female vocals are beautiful on the Hi-Fi Man, but they're even better on the ZMF, in my opinion. The ZMF Atrium has the nicest, uh, just smoothest, most liquid, uh, beautiful female vocals of any headphone I've heard up to this point. Um, some others that were real close, the ZMF Verite Open, uh, had very similar um, female vocals. Uh, the... Kennerton Odin is another one I really like, but um, the Hi-Fi Man, both 1000s, the HE1000 Stealth and the HE1000 SE, both have really nice, um, like I said, it's not dry at all, just very nice, rich uh, vocals, but the ZMF, I would say, is a step up above the Hi-Fi Man. Ah, uh, the treble. The Hi-Fi Man SE1000 has the cleanest, um, most detailed, most sparkly treble I've heard, but without sounding harsh, without sounding 
emphasized without being fatiguing. Just beautiful treble. Uh, the treble on the ZMF is also excellent, but tamed down just a little bit from the Hi-Fi Man. If you're one of these people that uh, feels the Hi-Fi Man tunes their headphones with the treble a little bit too bright, and there are a lot of people out there that feel that way. I don't. I love Hi-Fi Man treble, but my ears are getting old, so you know that bright treble actually brings out the detail to me that you know, um, I might not hear if the treble was tamed down a little bit, but I have no trouble with the ZMF. They have beautiful treble. It just is slightly tamed down from the Hi-Fi Man. Not quite, uh, doesn't extend quite as high, but it's still beautiful. Really nice, um, clean, detailed treble, and once again, never sounds harsh or fatiguing. Um, the sound stage. Um, now let's talk about detail first. Okay, the Hi-Fi Man HE1000 is the most detailed headphone I've heard up to this point. Um, it just has exceptional detail and resolution. If it's on the recording, you're going to hear it. The ZMF uh, doesn't have quite the detail and resolution of the Hi-Fi Man, but it is very, very good. And you're never going to feel like you're missing anything unless you compare it directly to the Hi-Fi Man. I mean, I, when I'm listening to the ZMF, I never feel like it's lacking detail. It's like probably 95% of the way there to the Hi-Fi Man, but like I said, the S 1000 SE has the most detail and highest resolution of any headphone I've heard so far. Um, the sound stage. Both of these headphones have a very large sound stage. They're both very wide. I'm hearing sounds way out to the sides on both of these headphones. The difference is the Hi-Fi Man has a taller sound stage. I hear things way up here above my head. And the ZMF has a little more depth of the sound stage, especially when combined with the ZMF or the uh, Felix Audio Elise headphone amp. And um, if you're on a lower budget, the Felix Audio Echo all, is an excellent choice also at half the price of the Elise. But anyway, but not quite on the same level. Excuse me, just a second. Anyway, um, the ZMF with the Felix Audio Echo just has a very deep sound stage, a lot of depth out in front of me and even a little bit behind me. Uh, so more so than the Hi-Fi Man. The Hi-Fi Man isn't bad at all. Um, the lower end Hi-Fi Mans I've never thought had much depth to the sound stage, but the um, both of the 1000s and especially the 1000 SE does have very good depth of the sound stage, but um, the ZMF Atrium combined with the Felix Audio Echo just has a very deep sound stage that sounds very three dimensional. I feel when I'm listening to it, I just feel like I'm surrounded by music, not only out to the sides, but out in front and in back and just. I feel like it's all around my head. I feel just completely enveloped in music and I just love that about it. Um, so anyway, yeah, n nothing wrong with the depth of the soundstage at all on the Hi-Fi Man, but the ZMF just has that extra depth that the Hi-Fi Man just doesn't seem to have. And um, I've tried the Hi-Fi Man with the Felix Audio Elise and the Elise just does not match up well with planar magnetic headphones. I haven't found a planar magnetic, even the easier to drive planar magnetics like some of the newer Hi-Fi Man and uh, the Kennerton planar magnetic headphones. They sound good with the Elise but they just, it's not a perfect match. Actually, the lower priced um, Felix Audio Echo is a better match with planar magnetic headphones. It actually does very well with some of the easier to drive planar magnetics. But anyway, um, but like I said, um, just the, the ZMF just matches up so well. But that 
OTL tube amps are made for high impedance headphones. That's just, you know, theoretically a perfect match and that's what it turns out to be when you listen to them. Um, as far as uh, the imaging, the imaging is very pinpoint on both of these, but even more so with the Hi-Fi Mat. Just exceptionally pinpoint imaging. I mean, just every instrument has an exact location, and it's never, you know, vague. It's just right there, right there. You hear every instrument in its own place. As far as separation, um, once again, the Hi-Fi Man has exceptional separation between instruments. The ZMF does very well in both, you know, imaging and separation. Uh, excellent separation between instruments on the ZMF, but the Hi-Fi Man is the best I've heard. I've never heard a headphone separate each instrument from each other the way the 1000 SE does. Um, as far as dynamics, the Hi-Fi Man is, I would say, has an average um, amount of dynamics as far as, you know, being punchy or having slam. It's just kind of down the middle. The uh, HE-1000 Stealth actually has a more punchy, more dynamic sound than the SE. Uh, the the uh, Atrium from ZMF does have um, a more dynamic sound than the Hi-Fi Man does, especially I notice it in the mid bass. It just has more weight and more punch to the mid bass than the uh, 1000 SE. Um, as far as um, the overall sound, the Hi-Fi Man is very analytical, but I, I'm not saying that in a bad way at all. A lot of people use the word analytical to describe things that sound dry and sterile. And that's not the case at all with the SE or 1000 SE. I say it's analytical because it just grabs every little detail like no other headphone I've heard. I mean, if you want the, the absolute last bit of detail out of every recording, the Hi-Fi Man 1000 SE is definitely the way to go. Um, the ZMF leans more towards a warmer, richer, more liquid sound, but still has very good detail. Um, you know, it's it's not lacking at all. It's just a different kind of sound, you know. Um, and because of that, I would say um, the 1000 SE, as far as being forgiving of less than perfect headphones, is not good in that department. The SE, the 1000 SE, if there are any defects in the recording, you are going to hear it with the 1000 SE. If a recording is less than perfect, you're going to notice. If a recording is done exceptionally well, you're going to really appreciate it and you're going to love listening to it with the 1000 SE. <clears throat> the ZMF, on the other hand, is a little more forgiving and isn't going to reveal uh, tiny little flaws in the recording. I mean, if there's large flaws, yeah, you're going to hear them with the ZMF but you're not going to hear the flaws to the level you are with the uh, Hi-Fi Man. So yeah, it's a little more forgiving and you're probably going to be able to listen to a larger percentage of your uh, collection, your music collection, with the ZMF and still enjoy it. Um, as far as comfort, I mentioned earlier the weight, uh, 457 grams for the Hi-Fi Man. It is very comfortable, but I do have one issue with it, and I have the same issue with all of the egg-shaped Hi-Fi Man headphones. As you can see, it goes down very low. Okay, I could wear it up higher, but if I do that, the sound stage gets really tall and narrow. So to get the wider sound stage, I found if you wear it lower, it sounds better, but the uh, problem with that is it ride the bottom end of the headphone rides down on my jaw here, and I do have a little bit of an issue with TMJ. And because of it riding down low like that, after about an hour, I still get start getting a little bit of discomfort in my jaw down here. And about once an hour, I have to take like a 10-minute break 
because of that. And I think it's not that it's squeezing too hard. It's not that it's too heavy. I think it's just because it rides down there low. And because of that, it's very comfortable until my jaw starts aching a little bit. And usually about a 10 minute break after about an hour listening, I'm fine. I can go back and listen to it for another hour. Okay, the ZMF is heavier. It weighs in at 524 grams, which is getting up there pretty heavy, but I actually find it extremely comfortable. I guess it's a combination of a really good headband, really nice, really soft ear pads, and um, almost no clamping force. And I just find the ZMF extremely comfortable, and there's no limit as to how long I can wear this. Um, no physical fatigue from this at all. It has um, the round ear cups that don't go down as slow, so I don't get the issue with the TMJ or the, you know, the pain in my jaw. And I could literally wear these for hours without any physical discomfort or fatigue. And then um, as far as listening fatigue, you know, the sound actually wearing out your ears, um, the Hi-Fi Man, they're so clean and so distortion free that I would say the listening fatigue is very low, but the one part about it that does wear me out after a while is they're just so detailed that that extreme detail after a while can start to wear you out a little bit. Um, like I said, I would say the listening fatigue is low on these, even very low, but they do get to me after a little while. So once again, I, you know, uh, for physical reasons, I need to take that 10 minute break after an hour and it kind of, um, I kind of need it because of so much detail also. It just get, my ears need that 10 minute rest maybe once an hour where the ZMF, I would say have pretty much zero listening fatigue. It's just such a warm, smooth, liquid, um, almost like creamy, rich sound that it just, I never feel any listening fatigue from these at all. And once again, um, I could listen to these for hours and not take a break. And like, and like I said earlier, even less than perfect recordings, I can, I can enjoy them and listen to them for a long time with these headphones. So, um, bottom line, I love both of these headphones. And if I'm listening to a recording that I want to hear every last detail, and I'll point out a, an actual recording that I do notice a difference here. Okay, uh, some recordings, I don't notice a lot of difference in the detail level of these two, two headphones. But one I did definitely notice a difference and it's it's got to be like 30 years old um and a cd and all my listings done pretty much on cds uh cambridge audio transport and um i forgot to mention earlier that i'm using uh core power technologies to provide clean to power to all my equipment uh but anyway um while back, I picked up the CD. I, I don't know why I didn't own it until now. I've been listening. I've heard it for 30 years. But anyway, there was a group called AHA. Uh, you probably remember the song Take On Me. Very popular song. Got a lot of radio play like 30 years ago. But anyway, the name of the album or the CD was, I think it's called Hunting High and Low. And that is recorded exceptionally well. It is one of the cleanest most detailed CDs I've ever heard. Anyway, listening to that, I did notice that the Hi-Fi Man was on a higher level of detail and resolution than the ZMF. But once again, the ZMF is still very, very good. It's just the Hi-Fi Man HE1000 SE is the best I've ever heard at that. You know, but, um, you know, but most recordings, I don't hear that much difference, but the bottom line, like I said, if I want, if my goal is to hear every last detail in a recording, I'm going to grab the HE1000 SE. 
If I'm just sitting back, plan on doing a long listening session and listening just to relax and, you know, get sit in my big chair in my listening room, put on the headphones, turn the lights down, and just listening for enjoyment, uh, the ZMF can't be beat in my opinion. I love them for that, especially if I'm planning on listening for more than an hour, you know, two or three hours, the ZMF's going to be the way I go. So um, both of these headphones are outstanding in my opinion. The, the HE1000SE I would say is the king of detail. And then um, the ZMF Atrium is just pretty much the king of enjoyment. I just, there has never been a time that I've listened to this headphone that I just didn't love it. I mean, I just, I'm just so, um, I'm almost overwhelmed at times by just how pleasant and enjoyable the sound is out of these. So I personally don't think you can go wrong with either of these, but like I said, I decided to throw this comparison together because they are similar in price range and um, but quite different headphones and not everybody's looking for the same thing. You know, so some of you, um, this HE1000 SE might be the ultimate headphone for you, but others, this may be a better choice. Um, like I said, if you're real sensitive to treble, um, I would probably go with the ZMF. You know, if you want a little bit more weight to the bass, a little bit a warmer sound, the ZMF. Um, you know, if you want to be able to swap ear pads and adjust the sound to your taste, ZMF. If you're looking for every last detail, um, the Hi-Fi Man's probably the way to go. So anyway, uh, that's about it. I'm going to wrap this up. Once again, this is William from The Headphone Experience. If this video has helped you, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. And The Headphone Experience on Facebook is up to 25.6 or maybe 7,000 members. Uh, you're all welcome to join us over there. Once again, thanks for watching my video.